can I see uh, a digit eight in your chat box? I just want to confirm that uh, my, my sound is okay. All right, I can see all the eight here. Fat, fat, fat. For Chinese, it's prosperity. So I wish you all prosperous in the Kangen business. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for all the responses. Okay. So before I start today's training, I have an important announcement to make on behalf of Energic Malaysia. So as you can see, this is the announcement. And um, the first thing I need to say is that, okay, for those who purchase uh, the RD Nitri Zero back in October, okay, so you may return and request for an exchange starting from 24th November, which is this coming Friday. And this is the good news, okay? So coming Friday, you can uh, go to the office and do your one-to-one -one exchange, okay? And please note that the Maxwell Alkaline Battery 9V is no longer compatible. Huh? So this is a very important statement. No longer compatible with the improved RD Nitri Zero. So as an option, it is advisable to use a standard heavy duty 9V battery, which is currently available in any stock. So forget about the alkaline battery, just go back to the regular 9V battery, okay? Energizer, GP, Green Cell, or Maxwell, okay? As long as it's regular 9V, then it's compatible with the new 9300, all right? Okay, so next slide. And the next important announcement is that, okay, please follow the installation below because some people, when you install the battery, sometimes you do it, you know, the other way. So just make sure that when you install the battery, you, you have to connect the battery to the connector correctly, okay? So there's an uh, indication below and all this will be made available in a sticker form and we will put the sticker at the back of the battery cover to remind everyone that this is the proper way to install the battery to avoid any damages, you know, being done to the detector because this is a sensitive piece of equipment and we have to do it properly, okay? And one important statement, do not use alkaline battery, okay? Just use the regular standard 9V battery available in Monday. Okay, so I hope I make myself clear in this announcement. I'll be making the same announcement uh, during the break later because uh, some latecomers, they might miss out the announcement and we will be repeating the announcement uh, during the break, or uh, the, the water break later. Okay, now basically today we have a lot of uh, topics to cover and I've managed to put in some new uh, videos and also some new uh, information. I think there's one new video and the video is going to be a long nine minute video. But trust me, all of you here is going to get a lot of uh, value, you know, from this new video. Because this new video itself explains almost the entire technicality part about the demos and how MG actually suppresses the uh, EM noise radiation and all that. Okay. So I, I believe you guys will enjoy it. All right. So let's get started. And my colleague will help me to look at some of the inquiries from the chat box. And as we do the training and certain... Uh, certain FAQs that comes in, we appreciate that, you know, we keep all the FAQs towards the end of training so it won't disrupt the, the flow of the training today. Okay, but my, my colleague will uh, also help answer certain FAQs in the chat box as we go along the training as well. Okay, so are you guys ready for the training? All right, if you're ready, then show me a, a letter digit eight in your chat box and let's start. Here you go, fat, fat, fat again, all right? Prosperity, prosperity for everyone. Okay, amazing. All right, let's begin. So basically, I've segmentized today's training into five very simple topics. And uh, this topic, we actually accumulated all this knowledge for the past six years. And uh, my team and I, we, we actually put in a lot of effort to, to come up with a lot of different, different, like for example, experiences and also some of the uh, back to basic uh, technical uh, explanation about this project. But I have to say something before I start training, okay? We are not here to turn ourselves into scientists or a uh, doctorate, you know, or maybe an engineer. Because when we do that, the words that we use or, or the description that we say could be very confusing to our regular clients out there, okay? So by all means, you guys can actually use this information and you can word it in a more simpler manner, you know, but as long as the facts is right, then everything should be okay, all right? But the reason why we're giving you this knowledge is because you need to have the baseline, I mean, the knowledge 
to have the confidence to go out there and to to talk to people about the goodness of MGAD and why is it built, you know, for the humanity. So this is the reason why we're having today's training to give you more clarity in terms of certain technical explanation of this uh, technology. Okay, so let's proceed with the first topic. Back to basic. So what's MGAD's function? So the proper way to answer this question is MGAD's function is to suppress specific electromagnetic noise radiation between this is actually the frequency bandwidth given by the developer. Okay, anything between three megahertz to one thousand megahertz. So it is actually a very specific uh, frequency range between three megahertz to one thousand megahertz. All right. Now don't ask me at which frequency band because you know this is their trade secret. They won't tell you at which area they actually segmentize the harmonics, but it's actually between, this is the bandwidth it's given, okay? And it is suppressing electromagnetic noise radiation, okay? It is not there to suppress any signals or telecommunication signals generated by your phone. Just in case you're wondering how come when you turn on the MGAD, you know, your Wi-Fi is still working, your phone is still getting signals in, because MGAD is not work or built to suppress any telecommunication signals. Okay, it is built to suppress electromagnetic noise radiation. Okay, now let's get more clarity on the next slide. So talking about this frequency bandwidth, people will ask you, so three megahertz to 1000. So what is the frequency designation? Okay, now based on our research, right? Three megahertz to 1000 megahertz falls under high frequency designation. Okay, so now you have got more technical words that you can use. So MGUD is actually suppressing high frequency electromagnetic noise radiation between 3 megahertz to 1000 megahertz. Okay, so this is a complete statement when people ask you what's MGUD's function. So you can use this. So don't worry for those people who is writing notes and all that. If I'm speaking too fast, we are recording this Zoom session. And the entire Zoom session will be made available at the Telegram uh, MGAT channel. Okay, so that you guys can repeat, repeat repetitively uh, look at the uh, Zoom recording and you can actually continuously learn some of these terms if you miss out. Okay, so don't, don't worry. We're going to just go speed rocket a bit because there's a lot to cover today. So for those of you who miss out, you cannot write down, just go back to the Zoom recording. Okay, next slide. Now, talking about frequency spectrum. So now some people, when we do sales, we are sometimes exaggerate, exaggerating and telling customers that, you know, and when you turn on the MGUD, you can actually suppress all types of electromagnetic radiation. Now that's wrong, huh? Because when we do that, we're going to create a lot of market confusion. And professionals like the engineers, they, they, they will begin to question you that, you know, how come when I do the testing with some other detectors who's measuring sickness and all that, how come other detectors are not responsive towards MGUD's suppression technology? Because when we say that MGAS suppresses all types of electromagnetic radiation, now that is a false statement. Okay, so to put everyone into perspective, MGAS suppresses the non-ionizing radiation. Okay, so in terms of EMR spectrum, there are only two category. It's like the acid and alkaline chart. Okay, it's either acidic or alkaline. Okay, it's the same concept. So over here, it's either ionizing or non-ionizing. Okay, now just a quick touch on ionizing. Ionizing radiation, the orange color one, you see the orange color one, okay? Now, these are the radiations which we are not addressing, okay? These are very high radiation. We are talking about the gamma rays, you know, the nuclear reactor, you know, all the X-rays from the X-ray machine. Now, these are super high radiation, okay? Now, what's the difference between ionizing and non-ionizing? To put it in a very simple perspective, ionizing radiation will have sufficient energy to immediately, you know, destroy or to manipulate or to do something, some changes to your biological cells. Meaning when you're exposed to this type of radiation, they can immediately affect your cells, you know, biologically. So this is ionizing. Now for non-ionizing, the definition is they have insufficient energy or power to immediately react or do any changes to your biological cells, okay? So one is with a lot of energy to alter your cells, another one is insufficient energy to do immediate alteration to your cells, okay? However, 
based on research over time. When we constantly expose ourselves to non-ionizing radiation for a long period of time, it will do something eventually. Okay, so this is the difference between non-ionizing and ionizing. And MGAD is actually addressing non-ionizing. Okay, now for frequency spectrum between 3 megahertz to 1000 megahertz, it actually falls between the radio and cell phone. If you look at these two arrows here, can you see the two arrows there? You can just point the closest to the two arrows, the two red arrows. Okay, so it's actually fall under radio and cell phone column. Okay, so this is the MGAT's effective range. So far, so good. All right, now. To conclude the entire explanation, when people ask you, what is MGAD's function? Okay, so MGAD is built to suppress high frequency electromagnetic noise radiation, okay, between three megahertz to 1000 megahertz. Okay, and this frequency bandwidth falls under the non ionizing radiation spectrum. Okay, this is the full answer for the entire technical answer for this question so far so good all right if you guys are still with me can i see a letter digit eight in your chat group so that i can proceed with the next slide okay thank you so much for all the responses let me drink some kangen water okay two. okay next all right so the next topic is how does it work? It's very important because when customers is going to question you, so when you turn on the MGAD, how does it actually work? Okay, so we got all these answers and training from the developer directly. That's the reason why we're able to dissect this into a more simpler you know, uh, slides to explain to you. So basically, a typical EM radiation source comes out from any you know, electronic or electrical devices. As long as anything powered by electricity, or battery operated, it will generate a certain level of electromagnetic energy, or we call it radiation. Okay, now, first, MGAT is built to focus on a targeted noise pattern. Okay, anything that runs with integrated circuit board, for example, your phone, your phone runs with battery, at the same time, there is a huge IC circuit board, okay, the integrated circuit board inside here. Okay, so when the components communicate between themselves, it is going to generate a certain level amount of energy. We call it EMI. Okay, it's actually a type of electromagnetic radiation noise. And this noise or this energy is going to be transmitted to you when either you hold your phone. And for some appliances, the noise energy actually travels between one to three meters. Okay, it has the ability to shower or to travel about one to three meters. So this is how far it travels away from the gadgets, depending on the power voltage as well. Okay, now next. MGAD is then sending out strings of harmonic frequency, or we call it cancellation frequency in technical terms. And this is what the patent is stating. Okay, all these words is coming from the patent itself. And at this point, when it breaks the pathway of the noise pattern, okay, the energy has got no pathway to travel out from its source. Okay, so let's look at the conclusion below. MGAD's technology is breaking the pathway of specific frequency between three megahertz to 1000. So this is the bandwidth, okay? Hence, reducing the electromagnetic noise radiation within its coverage range. So this is actually how the technology works. Okay, one picture, a few words, and it concludes the entire technology that they have been building and doing research for more than 10 years. Okay, next. All right, so this is again a summary to show you the first and second so that you can see the comparison, okay? So the harmonic frequency, also known as cancellation frequencies, have opposing amplitude to their corresponding radiation frequencies in the air. And thus, they suppress each other or cancel each other out altogether. So this is a bit physics. Okay, so when they send out opposing frequency patterns, this is how they actually uh, distort or to deconstruct the radiation frequencies, which is, you know, from all the electronic or appliances, or maybe, you know, from anywhere. It, it could be from the power line or from the environment itself. Because EM radiation, you know, pollution is everywhere, but our eyes can't see, okay? All right. So now I've actually dissect three different, different explanation here. And this is actually some 
technical wordings just in case you need to explain to your customers. So we actually put it nicely and we got approval from the developer and this is good to go. And this is how they, they wish uh, the distributors to explain to the people. So the first point is, MGUD uses the harmonics frequencies to suppress the specific high frequency electromagnetic noise radiation within four meter radius. Okay, so this is the MGUD's uh, effective range, which is four meter radius away from the MGUD when it is power up. Okay, now second point, harmonics frequency, also known as cancellation frequencies, have opposing amplitudes to their corresponding. So this is a repetition of what you just read early on on the previous slides, okay? So they suppress each other or cancel each other out altogether, okay? And the third point is, MGUS technology is breaking the pathway of specific frequencies between 3 megahertz to 1,000 megahertz, hence reducing the high frequency electromagnetic noise within its coverage range. So this is some technical uh, comprehensive readings just in case you need, you know, when your customer asks you, how does it work? Okay, so we put everything in a nutshell. So far, so good. All right, now let's move on. The next one is even better. What is the benefits? Now, usually customers, they don't actually buy into the function of the machine. But the customers, they will actually buy into the benefit of the machine. What, what actually, you know, what's the benefit? If I invest something, 1480 US dollars, or in ringgit, you know, 6620 ringgit, how can this MGUD benefit my family members and my loved ones? Okay, so the benefit answer is actually very important as well, you know, in, in terms of marketing and sales. Okay, so let me bring you back to the entire uh, technology concept. Okay, the inventors and the developer team developed this technology based on this professor's research and findings. Okay, now who is this lady here? Dr. Magda Harvest, it's a Canadian researcher and she's a professor, you know, she, she's been... Uh, devoting her life, you know, researching into the effects of electromagnetic pollution, the, she call it electrosmog, and her work focuses on the biological effects of electromagnetic radiation. Okay, now through her research, she found out something pretty shocking, and today I would like to share with you, you can actually use some of these statements uh, during your presentation as well, okay, because all these are all published research by a PhD professor, okay. Now, Dr. Magda Harvest discovered that electrosmog affects the blood. Meaning, when we're exposed to all this EMR or you know, EM radiation all around you, okay, by either handling the gadgets or maybe I could be just sitting in a room and in a room filled with LED lights and power cables below my feet. Because when you're staying in condo, below your feet is actually the ceiling of the units below. So it's actually filled with all these power lines and all that. Okay. So according to Dr. Magda's Harvest research, this is what she found out. Let's take a look at the images. This is shocking, yeah? Now, she discovered that the blood without any chemical added to it, it in an electromagnetically clean environment, this is how it should look like. Okay. So the hemoglobin, which is a red blood cell, it flows freely, you know, it goes individually like this. All right. Now, what happens next is that she put herself into tests. Okay, she used a cell phone and after that she did the prick to the finger and she discovered under the microscope that this is how her red blood cell looks like after 10 minutes of cordless phone use. Okay, and then she did another test, which is C. So she used 70 minutes of her desktop, you know, computer and this is what she discovered as well. If you notice, there is actually a difference between, next slide, A, B and C. Okay. Now, in technical term, this is what we call a Rulox formation. Rulox is a French word, meaning your red blood cell is actually stacking up together. It's like Pringles, you know, the potato chips. When you buy the Pringles potato chips, so the chips are stacking together in one bottle itself. Okay, so your red blood cells became Pringles. It stacks like this, okay, together all the way. Okay, so this is a shocking uh, finding from Dr. Meta Harvest, and she discovered this uh, during one of her research and what's going to happen is this. All this rule of formation is going to bring consequences or symptoms to the human body, including poor circulation and low oxygen transports. I want you to focus on the yellow highlighted symptoms. 
low oxygen transport. Okay. Now, according to one of the local doctor's explanation, he was the one who teach me about the surface area of the red blood cell when we have relox formation. So basically, when our red blood cell sticks together, it has got very small surface area because you, usually when your red blood cell is like this, it's like a donut, you've got a very huge surface area, isn't it? Okay. But when two red blood cells stick together like this, the surface area of the red blood cell became smaller. Okay. Hence, this scenario, okay, this happening is going to slow down or lower down the oxygen transport because your blood is carrying oxygen, you know, it's carrying nutrients to the cell. So when the surface area became so small and stacked together, it actually causes low oxygen transport and also reduce waste removal and all that. Okay, you can read it. It's all over there. Okay, now why I invite all of you here to focus on low oxygen transport for one very simple reason. Okay, now for those kanganites, you guys are very familiar with the next slide. Okay, Dr. Warburg, Dr. Wal Warburg actually won the Nobel Prize back in 1931 because he discovered the root cause of cancer. Okay, and we always use this during the Kangen demo, acidosis, hypoxia, but we focus on acidosis, isn't it? But today I want you to take a look at the second cause, which is hypoxia. Hypoxia means lack of oxygen in the cell. Otto Warburg say that deprive a cell 35% of its oxygen for 48 hours and it may become cancerous. Okay, so now I'm connecting the dots. Is it making sense now? Okay. When your blood goes into Rolox formation, okay, it promotes low oxygen transports, hence leading to the depreciation of the oxygen in the cell. And eventually, it might cause hypoxia as well in this scenario. Okay, so far so good. All right. So I'm just trying to put in, you know, now, now some people, now you understand that you know, how come sometimes people say that, you know, when we're exposed to EMR and all that, potentially we might be getting certain unforeseen ailments like you know cancers and all that so these are some of the explanation and you can actually use this as a reference okay so next now this next video i'm going to just do a disclaimer and i myself i'm considered as uh someone who is really researching into all this emr and all that for six years because uh, i've got some personal encounter with emr you know one of my family members uh Un unfortunately, she actually didn't make it because uh, some of the costs. But I'm not I'm not supposed to say it here because it's very sensitive topic. So I'm going to just keep what I'm about to say. And because of that, you know, because what had happened to my family member and all that, I actually did a further research. I wanted to see what Dr. McDowell said is true or not in terms of relox formation. So I did this personal test myself. I bought the microscope and I did it myself. And I want to share with you some of my findings here. Are you ready for the video? All right, if you're ready, can I see digit eight from the chat box? And let's proceed with the video. All right, you guys are still around. Shen Lin, Bu Chu, all right. Thank you very much, Jeremiah. Amazing, amazing. Okay, prosperity, prosperous. All right, Raj Naidu, I can see my dear friends there. Okay, all good. Now, let's play the next video and let's allow the video to explain to you before I go on to the next video. So this is actually my own red blood cell, okay? My own blood sample, I prick myself, okay? So let's play the video. Thank you, Denise. Can I have the volume, please? The sound? Hold on, guys. I'm going to adjust the uh, the sound output setting. All right. Let's replay the video. Okay, let's go all the way, restart the video. This is my Order. blood sample after playing on the phone for about 15 minutes. Let's take a look at the relox formation from my live blood sample. And we are taking it through this uh, microscope. Okay, through breaking our finger. All right. So what I did was I actually hold on to my phone, which is a Samsung phone here. Okay, no offense. Any phone will do that. This is my blood sample. And uh, after... what happened is that I was playing on my phone. I was watching YouTube, you know, some programs for about 15 minutes. And I did a prick to my finger and I put it under the microscope. And this is how I, this is what I discovered. Okay, so this is how the pattern looks like. Okay, so what's going to happen next is that I actually switch on the M guard and I leave it 
away from me for about two and a half meters, about two and a half meters away from me. And I'm still holding the phone, by the way, while I'm still doing the test, I'm still holding the phone, I'm still watching some YouTube programs. And after about 16 minutes, I did another prick. Okay, and I wanted to show you the results of uh, what happened after I turned on the MGUD for 16 minutes. After 15 minutes, continuous playing on my handphone, and uh, I turn on the M-Guard over here, as you can see, this is less than 2 meter away from me. And uh, this is the after result. Ben, can you help me to adjust to can. more? Yeah. So this is the after 15 minutes of turning on M-Guard. At the same time, I'm still playing on my phone. I'm on 15 minutes of non-stop YouTubing, watching some program. And this is how my live blood uh, looks like. Oh, cool. Uh, focus, okay. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Ben. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, so to give you guys more clarity, oh, you know, when I did this test, uh, I was actually doing uh, what, what I call as fasting. Okay, I, I, didn't, I did not drink any canning water. I did not eat. You know, and uh, what I did was I run through the test and all in, it took me about about 40, a good 40 minutes. So this is what I found out from my own sample. So this is just a personal sharing to show you. Uh, this is my testimonial, okay? Now, let's go back to the statement from the patent. Now, everything makes sense now, okay? So based on the patent statement, I want you to read a few lines, just a few lines. Just follow my cursor. Okay, the first line, the beneficial effects of the apparatus. Now, when we say apparatus, means it is the MGAR technology. Okay, always not mentioned because it, they, they call it apparatus in, in, in the patent report. Okay, so according to the embodiment of the present invention, it's recorded by a blood flow measuring device. So in this test, you know, when they submit the patent, so it's actually measured through a blood flow measuring device. It's different from what I just showed you. What I just showed you is a microscope. It's a live blood analyst, okay? This is another different machine, and this machine is supposed to measure the blood flow, okay? And I want you to look at this line, just follow my cursor, okay? Just follow the cursor, and here, there you go. The device measure microcirculation of the test subject finger when the subject is first subject to electromagnetic radiation via a cell phone. So same thing, during the test, when they submit the patent, you know, the subject's using a cell phone, and then the electromagnetic radiation effects of the cell phone is suppressed using the apparatus according to an embodiment of the present invention, which is MGAS technology. Okay, so I want you to look at the first digit here, 6.13. As can be seen in the graph, the initial microcirculation rate of the test subject finger is 6.13 centimeter per second. At time marker, when the test subject makes contact with a cellular phone, at time marker 2, okay, the microcirculation drops to 2.55. Now, meaning before the subject holds the phone, the microcirculation speed, you know, from the finger, it's at 6.13 cm. But as soon as the test subject holds on to the handphone, the microcirculation from the fingertip reduce from 6.13 to 2.55 cm per second. So there's a reduction, okay? Meaning what Dr. Magda Harvest research about rule of formation, you know, how your blood actually slows down, sticks together, it's true because Based on the patent submitted by the developer, there is a drop in terms of microcirculation speed when we hold on to a cell phone or any electronic devices. So far, so good. Okay. Now, the next one, this is the, this is the takeaway. After the apparatus is turned on, meaning after the MGAT technology is turned on in this case, okay? All right. The measuring device detects a spike in the microcirculation to 20.1 and eventually it stabilizes at, look at the last line, 26.6. .6. Stabilizes. 20. So meaning from 2.55, okay, the improvement of microcirculation actually went all the way to about 26.6 .6 from 2.55. Okay, now next slide. So this is the final paragraph of the patent. It says that it can therefore be summarized that the invention can effectively, I love this word effectively, you know why? Because effectively, it's a confirmation, all right? So from the test report says that, you know, the invention can effectively suppress the negative effects of electromagnetic radiation on microcirculation 
from either handheld cellular devices or computer connected to wireless network. Wow. Just imagine this, guys. This is such a huge market because today, the people that we know left and right, we are holding all this. It's stated in the patent, cellular devices, computers. Who doesn't use handphones or computers? Almost everyone uses it, okay? And MGUD can effectively suppress the negative effects of the EM radiation on microcirculation. So this statement itself, I think without any demonstration, you guys are able to sell the MGUD already. Agree or agree? Okay? With this statement itself, it is good enough for you to market this technology. Okay? Moreover, we have a demonstration to show. So on top of that, besides all these statements and all that, we still have more demonstrations to show. So I mean, selling MGUD to us is actually a piece of cake. All right? It's so easy. It's so simple. It's straightforward. All right? Next. So now, to fortify this, okay, on the benefits besides the patent, besides what I did, you know, my personal research on my blood and all that. Now, there is a medical doctor in Taiwan. His name is Dr. Liu Rinjie, okay? He's a professional and he's an ophthalmology. So what he did was he actually uh, called out 10 of his subjects and he did a clinical trial on the MGUT technology before and after turning off and basically, Dr. Liu, it's a eye, he's an eye doctor, okay? He, 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 he treats people's eyes and all, and all that. And he realized that, you know, today, a lot of people, they are having this dry eye disease and all that, you know, due to poor microcirculation from the eyeball. Because, because when we look on screen time, let's say we look on the screen, on the phone and all that, maybe there is a lot of this pollution from the lightings and all that. So it actually depletes the microcirculation speed from the eyeball, and it actually affects some, someone's eyes. Okay, they call it eye, eye health, right? Eye health. So based on his research and his clinical trial, I would like to share with you his results. Okay, so he actually did three stages. Okay, let me dissect the report into three stages. Everything is in Mandarin. So we translated it back to English for this training purposes. Okay, comparison of three stages of artery hemodynamics measurement. Okay, no, no, first stage. Now, let me just give you a brief. Out of his 10 subjects, okay, the age group between the 10 subjects is between 19 years old all the way to 60, about 60 or late 50s. Okay, so out of the 10 subjects, different age group, okay, and if I'm not mistaken, there is seven female and five, sorry, seven female and three male. Okay, so this is the 10 subject. So these are the so-called average numbers that he gotten from all the three stages of tests. Now, let me show you some of the photographers before I go back to the test. Go next. So during the test, this is actually the equipment that he's using. And Dr. Liu himself, he's actually doing running the test using the equipment and he's doing this you know, on the subject's eyeball. And this is how he got the uh, data, okay, by doing this. All right, just go next. So this is how we do it by using the machine, okay? Now let's go back to the figures. Okay, now these are some scientific figures here. Now stage one. Stage one means this 10, sub, this 10 test subject, they are not using any mobile phones or no, they're just sitting in an environment, okay? And based on Dr. Liu's finding, the average microcirculation speed for the eyeball clocked in under this. This is actually the figure here, okay? All right, can you see that? All right, 20.1 plus minus 9.83. So this is actually the average, you know? They, they, they call it a peak systolic velocity. So it's actually a measurement. Okay. Now, stage two, second stage. After 30 minutes of using the mobile phone, meaning the next stage, is he, he, actually, he actually asks or invite 10 of his subjects to look at the mobile phone for 30 minutes. Okay. What I did in my live blood was 16 minutes or 15 minutes of mobile phone usage. So this is longer. This is 30 minutes. Okay. Now, immediately, he registered the result. And if you notice, the result, it dropped from 20.1 to 16.2. Did you notice that? Okay, so the reading actually dropped. Huh? So the microcirculation speed out of the 10 subjects actually dropped from this figure. Okay, so this is about approximately about 30% drop. Okay, about 30, 25, 30%. All right. Now, take a look at the next one. Third stage. When he turned on the elevate electromagnetic radiation below one G, so this is actually the MGA technology. So when he turned that on, he did another 
test on all the subjects and look at the PSV value. From 16.2, it shows up to 25.9 in average. And if you, if you look at third stage and stage one, did you notice that it is even better than first stage? 25.9 versus 20.1, okay? Now this is because during the first stage, there is already certain inferences of EMR in the environment itself, okay? Not supposed, not, not necessary from the phone, but from the environment. That's the reason why the average reading is a bit lower. But when he turned on the environment harmonizer, so this is the third uh, data that he got in. So in this clinical trial, it is there to confirm that when we turn on the MGAR technology, it actually helps to improve the microcirculation speed as well. And in this case, it's actually the eyeball's microcirculation speed. So far, so good. Okay, so this is one piece of amazing information here. And you can actually use this during your marketing initiatives. All right. Okay, well, I can see 888 eight, eight there. Automatically, someone just put 888, eight, all right? Prosperity, prosperity. So these are some very powerful uh, informations to be shared with you, okay? Now, up to this point, usually what I'll do is I will give just a quick three to five minutes. Maybe let's, let's, let's do a three minutes water break, okay? Let's do a quick three minute water break. Just go and grab your Kangen water, go for a quick toilet break. And when we come back, we're gonna to return to the training and I've got more videos to show you. And trust me, it's going to get better and better. Okay, so let's pause for about three minutes to allow all of you here to get a quick water and toilet break. I'll see you in the next three minutes. So now it's 9.08 in Malaysia time. I'll be seeing you at 9.11 p.m. sharp. Thank you, guys. See you soon. Guys, okay, guys, it's 9 11 sharp, and uh, let's resume uh, our training. Okay, now for those people who came in late earlier on, uh, if you miss out the announcement, I'm gonna just repeat the announcement here. Okay, so for those people who purchased the uh, detector back in October, Energy Malaysia is inviting me to uh, make an announcement. And all of you here who purchased back in October, you can actually do your one to one exchange starting from 24th of 
November, which is this coming Friday. Okay. All right. And please take very important note that the Maxwell alkaline battery 9 volt is no longer, no longer compatible. Okay. So you cannot use alkaline battery anymore because this reworked version does not require such a powerful battery. So it's advisable to go back to standard heavy duty 9 volt battery. It is sufficient for the detector to, to do the demonstration. Just go back to regular battery like Energizer, GP Green Cell, or Maxwell regular 9V battery. Okay. All good. Now, the next slide. So an important note for the distributors to understand that this is actually a instruction from the supplier. And they're asking you to, when you install the battery, you know, please make sure that you don't do it reverse. Okay, don't just go reverse and stand you touched because this might, you know, do some damages to the detector. So please remember when you install the battery, just make sure that, you know, you have to put it to the right connector. Okay, minus to minus, you know, positive to positive. Okay, so what happens if you use the alkaline battery is that because the alkaline battery is so strong and if let's say you use the alkaline battery, it is okay. But if let's say you accidentally reverse the polarity, you put minus to minus, positive to positive, let's say you reverse, plus to minus, minus to plus. So it might damage or cause damages to the integrated circuit board of the detector. Okay, so that's reason why we are not supposed to use alkaline battery for the new revoke version. Okay, so far so good. All right. For the 9100, you can just go back to a regular uh, battery. Regular battery works fine for 9100. Okay, now, next. Okay, in this topic, basically, we are here to address uh, three of the frequently asked questions. Actually, we got more than three. We have about 15 uh, accumulated uh, FAQs, and we have actually uploaded it on the MGUD's website. So just in case you wanted to know more answers, you can visit, you know, mguard.com. And on the MGUD website, you go all the way to the bottom of the website. We have got 15 different, different FAQ questions with answers. And you can actually go there for some common questions and also the answers. Okay. But in this training, I'm going to do three questions, which is out of the picture. And it is related to the detector and some questions asked, you know, by the prospects during your marketing initiatives. Okay. The first question. Now, to us, this question is very important because now when we can handle or can, let's say we can explain these questions correctly, then we can actually so-called um, counter most of the objections in the market. Okay. So please pay attention on the following two question and a picture paint, paint a thousand words, you know, I actually put it down in a very nice manner, you know, using a video format so that you guys can repetitively take a look at the explanation video. And with that, it's going to help you to understand better and also to, to get the answers correctly to your prospects as well. Now, first question, why do we suggest using the detector, either 9100 or 93, instead of other detectors in the market? So this is one of the most challenging questions in our six years of uh, experience because people don't understand how come when we do the demonstration, how come we are not using the other cheaper detectors out there. Some detectors are only selling for 60 ringgit, you know, some going for 200 ringgit. It is because these detectors out there, they are built to measure either the electric field or magnetic field intensity from the power line or the signal strength from the antenna. Okay. And 9100 is a very different detector. It's measuring high frequency electromagnetic noise and it converts it into a microwatt reading, which is a power density reading for radiation. Okay, so let's take a look at this video. And this video will explain to you the different different detectors out there and how come 9100 is different from the other detectors. Okay, so in this section of the video, I'm going to show you the differentiation from different... Guys, how's the volume level? Should I increase the volume or decrease? Can I see some comments from the chat box? Should I increase the volume or decrease the volume? Perfect volume. Okay, good. Let's play the video. Increase. Some said increase. Just increase a little. Just increase. Okay. Let's play the video. Different detector available in the market and why some of detector you should avoid it while you're using it to do the MGAP demo. Now, cheaper detectors like this, it says electromagnetic radiation detector, but when you hook this emitter on, you can't even detect the radiation from a phone screen. 
So this doesn't work because this detector is only used to measure very low frequency radiation from the power socket. Okay. Now, another type of detector available in the market, electromagnetic field tester. Now this detector, we found out that this detector is only good at reading the signal coming in from the 4G or the Wi-Fi. Let me show you what I mean. Let me activate the meter here and I wanted to put this meter below the iPhone. Okay. Now, as soon as I call up a program from the iPhone, for example, I'm going to turn on the YouTube channel. There you go. So now the detector is actually responding to the data received from the YouTube itself. Now, as soon as I turn this phone into the airplane mode, so I'm going to terminate the Wi-Fi and also the mobile data. Okay. So immediately when I turn it to the airplane mode, as you can see, you no longer receive any response from this detector. Okay, now however, as soon as I off switch off the airplane mode and the data is back, the detector began to respond again to the signal from the phone. Now why I strongly recommended RD9100 is because now even if I turn the phone into the airplane mode, means there is no data, there is no Wi-Fi, the RD has ability to pick up the radiation from the phone itself and now it's averaging at about 1400 microwatts to about 1500 microwatts. Okay? So in other words, RD9100 is not picking up any signal. Instead, RD9100 is actually picking up the power density radiation coming from the battery okay, operated in the phone itself. Now, let me show you another detector in the market. This detector is what we bought from the USA and it's called the cell sensor. And supposedly this detector is able to pick up radiation from the cell phone. Okay, but now as soon as I hook up this meter, as you can see, okay, let me just put the meter on the table. Now, the phone is on airplane mode. As you can see, it's also picking up reading from the screen itself. Okay. integrated circuit is completely shut down, the RD will get zero reading because there is no more radiation source coming from this phone. Okay, because it's properly shut off from the screen itself. Okay, now, but the thing is, we found that this detector is actually picking up and responding or reacting towards the metal part of the phone. Now, I'm going to turn off the phone. Okay, let me switch off the phone now. And let me show you what I mean. Now, as soon as the phone is switched off, if I use the regular RD, once the integrated circuit is completely shut down, the RD will get zero reading because there is no more radiation source coming from this phone. Okay, because it's properly shut off and there is no power in the circuit itself. So everything goes back to zero. Okay, there you go. Alright, now, but for this detector itself, although the phone's already been shut off, you can still pick up reading from the phone itself. Now the reason being is because detectors like this, they're actually picking up and sensing the metal parts from the handphone. For example, now in this handphone cover, there is one metal piece over here. As long as I put this into the metal, the detector is reacting against the metal but not the radiation. Okay? Alright. Okay, so the conclusion, all right. So basically, you know, it meets the testing requirement for the MGUT demo. Okay, that's the conclusion. And as you can see in the video itself, I've been showing you all different, different detectors and how we measure. And some detectors actually pick up, you know, uh, we, we call it the transmitting signals coming from the antenna or the Wi-Fi, you know. And some detectors, they actually pick up metal, you know, it's actually sensing the metal rather than, you know, the high frequency electromagnetic noise radiation from the PCB board, the integrated circuit, and also the battery. Okay. So the 910 is measuring something beyond what the common detectors are doing, which is signals or either, you know, low frequencies uh, radiation coming from the power line. All right. Now, the next question is going to get more and more clearer. And for those people who miss out the video, don't worry. We'll be uploading the slides to the uh, MGUT channel and you can repeat it 
you know, repetitively, you know, watch the video again and again. And sometimes it can take you maybe two or three uh, views to really get it, all right? So the second question is going to open up your mind and people always ask, so what is the radi radiation detector measuring? What is RD9100? What is RD9300 measuring? And how come it's different from the other detectors? And how come I can't use the other detectors to do the demonstration against MGUT? Okay. So this upcoming video, it's a new video. And for those people who came in for this training for the first time, this is a treat. And for those people who return, you know, pe people who are coming back and they learn and all that. So this is actually a bonus for you. So because this video is new and uh, we compile it and it's going to be for the next nine minutes. So let's play this video without any further delay. And after the video, I'm going to just do a short summary to conclude, you know, what is RD measuring. And in this video, you, you can get a better understanding that, you know, how the MGUT actually works. Okay, let's play the video. Hi guys, today I'm going to conduct the very technical experiments and uh, to show you what the RD9300 is actually measuring as compared to the standard radiation detector available in market. And let me introduce to you all the tools I have here today. Basically, I have one unit of RD9300, one unit of LED light bulb, and this is the regular filament LED light bulb. It's a different light bulb as compared to this. This is a standard electric field, magnetic field detector to actually measure the low frequency electromagnetic radiation from the power source. And this is a standard power socket adjustable. And we have the MGUT here by Magic, okay? And of course, the SDR software and the toggle to hook up to all this. This is the monopole antenna. So today, let me show you a very simple explanation on why RD9300 is a very unique detector as compared to the standard detector. Okay, now a standard detector can actually measure any form of reading as long as I turn on the power source, as you can see, it's on now. But as soon as I terminate the power source, okay, the power density reading goes back to zero. Okay, so this detector is actually built to read as long as there is electricity coming from the power source, it will trigger the detector and here goes the reading. All right, now the power source is on, but when I hook on the 9300 detector, I turn it on, okay? It's on two dot and it's measuring high frequency electromagnetic noise. If you notice, when I put the detector close to the power socket, there is no power density reading, okay? And the simple reason is because this detector is built to read high frequency electromagnetic noise power density, okay? So this is the keyword noise, all right? So in this experiment, I'm going to show you a very simple test. First of all, I'm going to use this standard filament LED light bulb, which according to our research, this type of light bulb, they produce a very minimum or close to none. Means there is no electromagnetic noise pollution from this product, okay? Now to show you a quick demonstration, let me just put on this filament LED light bulb and let me switch it on, okay? Now, if I were to do the same measurement using the 9300, if you notice, you can hardly receive any power density reading, okay? There is nothing here, it shows zero, although the light bulb is on, okay? Now, but when you measure using the conventional detector, as long as there is electricity going through this power socket, it will speak some reading here, okay? So as you can see, there are certain readings going on on this detector. Okay, but not the 9300 as you can see. Let me just do a contrast. It's zero all the way, all the way down, okay? All right, now, I'm gonna use another tool, which is the SDL software to show you how come the 9300 is not receiving any power density reading here, okay? Because as you can see, when I turn on the software, and if you notice right, the noise level from the screen itself it's very minimal. And from the waterfall spectrum, you can actually hardly receive any uh, patterns or we call it noise patterns from the waterfall spectrum, okay? 
So the noise is averaging at a, a peak of about minus 35 dB and it's quite blank, means there is no external noise coming from this product, which is the filament light bulb. Okay, now what we'll do differently now is that I'm going to just switch off this light bulb, maintain the SDL software here. I'm going to remove this product, which is the filament LED light bulb, and I'm going to install it with this one. This is a very bright LED and it's supposed to save, it's called, it's called energy saver LED. And this product is going to release a humongous amount of electromagnetic noise pollution, okay, into the environment. Let me show to you what I mean. Now, as soon as I hook up this LED light bulb, look at this software. When I turn on the LED light bulb, as you can see, you can notice that the dB noise pattern here changes, okay? And if I put closer, just move closer to the screen, can you notice that the waterfall spectrum begins to have all these different, different wavy lines, we call it, okay? So this is the noise pattern. Now, as soon as I turn off the LED light bulb, the noise pattern disappeared from the software-defined radio screen, which is the waterfall spectrum here. Everything goes blank, okay? Now, as soon as I turn it on again, if you notice, the noise pattern actually came back and you can see the wavy line continuously flowing down from the waterfall spectrum from the software itself, okay? Now, this spectrum explains that, okay, let's move away. Now, when I use the RD9300 to measure this light bulb, if you notice, you can see that it's actually picking up a power density reading of more than 2,000 microwatts per square centimeter. Okay, there you go. So in this simple experiment, we are able to explain to you that this detector is actually picking up, you know, high frequency electromagnetic noise, similar to what you see from this software here, which is the SDL software. Okay, it's actually the same concept, all right? The same concept, okay? Now, as for this detector, no matter which light bulb I switch on to, as you can see, it is going to pick up certain readings as well, okay? It's 400, 500, because as long as there's electricity passing through the socket, this detector is already picking up reading, okay? But not for the RD9300, because this detector only picks up reading whenever this product releases huge amount of electromagnetic noise pollution from the product itself, okay? So now I'm going to show you the final experiment against the M guard. As you can see, the LED light bulb is still on. And as, far, as soon as I turn on the radiation detector, as you can see, it's picking up microwatt reading, about 2000 microwatts. Okay. And now I'm going to hook up the M guard by powering up the USB power connector over here. And as soon as I power up the M guard, as you can see, the detector is showing zero microwatts, meaning there is no a power density reading in terms of high frequency electromagnetic noise, okay? Now this scenario can again be explained by using the software defined radio if I'll do the simple experiment. So now let me turn off the detector first and let me bring back the software defined radio, okay? So let me just power off the MGUD now and let's bring back the software defined radio. As you can see, the LED is still on, okay? And as you can see, you can actually see the uh, noise spectrum going on here and as soon as I turn off the LED light bulb as you can see so there's a reduction and the screen here actually goes back to a clearer stage on the waterfall spectrum as you can see okay it's going blank now okay let me repeat the same contrast by turning on the LED again so as soon as, soon as I turn on the LED as you can see the waterfall spectrum or the wavy noise pattern returns okay so let me repeat the same uh, experiment by powering up the M guard. So now let me just hook on the M guard by putting in the power cable here. And as soon as I activate the M guard, as you can see, the waterfall spectrum goes to very clear state. It's like blank. There is a reduce or reduction of a noise pattern even on the dB scale. As you can see, the dB scale has been reduced. Let me repeat the contrast by turning off the M guard. Okay, let me just power off the M guard. Just remove. Okay, the M guard is off as you can see. Okay, there is no light here and immediately the uh, noise pattern from the SDL software came back, okay? It's deep, dark blue color, okay? So when I put back the power cable for the M guard, as you can see, there is a reduction here and everything went blank on the noise spectrum, okay? So to conclude this video, to give you a simple explanation, whenever we turn on 
the M guard and the detector is registering zero reading, okay, it's, act it's actually representing that because M guard is able to reduce high frequency electromagnetic noise as shown from the SDL dogger, okay, and this is what helps the detection method to achieve ground zero whenever we turn on the M guard during the demonstration. Okay, so that's the conclusion of this technical experiment. Thanks for watching the video. Okay, so I hope I make myself uh, clear in this video. And the reason why I choose to put all this explanation in one piece and we compile it into a nine video, a nine minute video because I believe that video is the best way uh, to duplicate this knowledge so that you guys don't have to repeat what I did because this is very technical. You have to learn a lot of this software and all that. So you can actually use this video and you can duplicate the information and you don't have to repeat yourself all the time by explaining you know to you know your either your team members or your potential prospects. Okay. Hi guys. Okay, now I'm gonna just move next to the third FAQ, all right? And in this FAQ, I think this is one of the most commonly asked question for so many years and uh, people actually did ask. Uh, can, can you mute, 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 just mute. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, can you hear me? Sorry for some technical hiccups. I think just now uh, I got muted. Okay, if you can hear me loud and clear, can I see digit eight from the chat box before I proceed? Thank you so much. All right, amazing. All right, cool. So now the third FAQs, why MGAT harmonizes frequencies of one gigahertz and below? Now, the reason why I, I deem this question as very important in your MGAT journey is because now today, a lot of telecommunication uh, signals, they're operating way above one gig. For instance, uh, we're talking about your Wi-Fi routers. Okay, Wi-Fi routers, they work between 2.4 to 5 gigahertz. So this is their data transmitting bandwidth. Okay, now talking about your 5G network. Okay, 5G is even way beyond that. It's talking about 20 over gigahertz all the way to about 60 gigahertz of frequencies. Okay, so a lot of gadgets, they're operating at so much higher frequency bandwidth, but how come MGAT only focuses on harmonizing specific frequencies below one gigahertz? Okay, so next, this is the main reason. So the answer is very simple. Now, documentation beats conversation. I love what Daniel DiMacali used to say. Okay, documentation beats conversation. So today, it's all about documentation, nothing from me. It's not from my knowledge. It's all from the documents that I'm about to show you, okay? Now, the first document I'm going to show you, this is coming from the FCC, which stands for Federal Communication Commission. It's a government body in the US. And in this body, they actually regulate all these different, different, you know, EMR exposure, what is the maximum permissible exposure limits, you know, from the gadgets and all that, okay? And we got this from a bulletin. And this bulletin itself, the title, it's called Guideline for Human Exposure to Radio Frequency Electromagnetic Fields, Okay. So in one of the pages from this bulletin, I just want you to focus on the highlighted uh, paragraph here. And it says that the new FCC exposure limits are also based on data showing that human body absorbs radio frequency energy at some frequencies more efficiently than others. Okay, meaning our human body actually absorbs the RF radio frequency energy at some frequencies, not all, Okay, so just remember these are not all frequencies because if let's say we absorb a lot of energies from all types of frequencies means we should be dead by now. You know why? Because every day we'll be bombarded with all these different, different frequencies everywhere. Okay, all the way from one hertz all the way to thousands and billions of hertz out there. Okay, so we'll be dead by now. So according to this, it says at some frequencies more efficiently than at others. Okay, now the next keyword the most restrictive limits occur in the frequency range between 30 to 300 megahertz. What's the range? 30 to 300. So this is a very specific number. Eh? Okay. And for your information, 
one gigahertz of frequency represents 1000 megahertz. So if you do the conversion from gigahertz down to megahertz, you just have to remove you know, the zeros. So one gigahertz in megahertz, it is as good as 1000 megahertz, okay? So 30 to 300 megahertz is actually below 1000, which is below one gig. Okay, so far so good, all right? And now let's continue where whole body absorption of radio frequency energy by human being is most efficient. Meaning our human body has the capability to absorb the RF energy at these frequencies, which is between 30 to 300, okay? More efficiently than at other frequencies. So these are the major frequencies that MGUD's developer is working on to actually reduce some of the damages, you know, from all this non-ionizing, you know, uh, radiation. So far, so good. Okay, so this is very clear. Now, next. Now, besides talking about FCC, now let me just pull out another documentation. This is actually from the World Health Organization and it's published back in 1993, all right? Based on the seal there is 1999, all right? Okay, so it's talking about electromagnetic fields, you know, anything between 300 hertz all the way to 300 gigahertz. So in one of the article, you know, one of the pages here, it is written clearly at the highlighted point, the resonant range extending from 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz for the whole body and to even higher frequencies in partial body resonance. Meaning at this particular frequency, right, it is actually the resonant range for the human body. Okay, our human body reacts towards this frequency at the resonance range. Now for your information, for those of you who have heard of this, uh, there is one medical equipment in the hospital, it's called the MRI, okay? MRI, Magnetic Resonance Imaging. If I'm not mistaken, I think the full name is called Magnetic Resonance Imaging, okay? So this is the full name for the MRI. So please correct me if I'm wrong, okay? So now MRI is actually operating at a frequency of about 60 to about 64 megahertz, for your information. Okay, and the reason why MR is operating at this frequency is because this frequency is actually the resonance frequency of our human body. And this frequency falls between 30 to 300 for your information. Okay, next. Oh. It's going to get clearer and clearer, okay? So the next research article by an Indian professor and engineer is saying that, okay, your aggregate frequencies of body organs. I want you to stay focused on this chart. This chart is very important. Okay, just go on the chart. Now take a look here, all right? The aggregate brain frequency is operating at between 72 to 90 megahertz, okay? Now a human body operates at between 62 to 78. That's the reason why the MRI machine works at around 64 megahertz of frequency because it needs to resonate to your body's frequency to get the imaging you know, of your organs and all that to see where are all these cells and tumors you know, from the body itself. Make sense? That's the reason why they tune the MRI machine to about 64 megahertz because it resonates to your body's frequency. Now, what's the heart frequency? 67 to 70. Liver, 55 to 60. And all the way down to pancreas, 60 to 80. And disease starts at 58 megahertz and below. Meaning, if let's say the vibration of all these frequencies in your body, it's at 58 or lower, this is when disease starts. So far, so good. All right. Now, just imagine that, you know, we are bombarded by these radiation frequencies at some of this. Let's say it's between this range. Let's say anything from 50 to 90 megahertz. So it's going to happen to you. Now, this itself explains why some people, when you put yourself in front of a computer for long hours, for those working crowd, you're experiencing all these unexplainable migraines and headaches. Some people, when you drive a long journey, you know, from, let's say, from KL to Singapore. I think our friend Bernard Chan used to do that, you know, all the way from Singapore, all the way to Cameron Highlands, you know, all this long hour driving and all that. You begin to develop chronic fatigue, you know, you, you have this unexplainable fatigue, you know, when you're doing this long hour drive, because when you use the detector and when you detect your moving vehicle, when you start the engine, you're going to surprise yourself. The radiation detector is going to go beyond 2,000 microwatts per square centimeter when you turn on the engine, okay? Now, going back to this body organ frequencies, now it makes sense why FCC is stating that, you know, between 
30 to 300 megahertz, it is the most restrictive limits, meaning it's dangerous. It's considered as dangerous, okay? Because 30 to 300 falls between your human body organs aggregate frequencies. If you notice, huh? so all these 72, 90, and all this fits between 30 and 300. Okay, so this is why you are getting all these symptoms whenever you're bombarded by all these radiations within these frequencies. Okay, next. So in this simple science teacher video, it's going to explain to you that, you know, when you're bombarded with the same frequency, for example, let's say your brain is operating at 72. And let's say there is a 72 megahertz frequency. And let's say this energy is coming to you. You're actually resonating with this frequency. And this is how you got certain symptoms, you know, like fatigue and headache and all that. Okay. So in this simple uh, tuning fork test, it's going to show you that when these two tuning forks tune to the same frequency, it is going to affect each other even without touching it. It's just airborne. Okay. Let's play the video. The first tuning fork it was tuned to 512 hertz if you notice it's different from the tuning fork from the ping pong ball okay then the next tuning fork when he put the next tuning fork next to each other it's actually tuned to the same frequency play, play the video again you notice okay so the first tuning fork was 512 against 440 Doing nothing to the ping pong ball or the ping pong, and the next one is of the same frequency 440 and 440. Did you notice the ping pong ball begins to vibrate because the tuning fork of the same frequency is to affect the other tuning fork to vibrate. So, this is what we conclude as the resonance theory. Okay, so now everything makes sense. You know, whenever we have frequencies between 30 to 300 megahertz, when it bombards to your body, you will develop certain symptoms. Okay, now the next video. I'm going to show you a more a clearer picture. And this video, I actually took it in one of my Airbnb state in Penang Island, Malaysia. Okay. And in this video, it's going to make more sense to you because I specifically tuned uh, my monopole antenna to 72 megahertz. And the reason why I do the test is because when I turn on the LED lights above me in the kitchen area, I was preparing my food. I have this unexplainable disturbance and headaches. You know, I've got this blur vision all of a sudden. And I suspect that there could be certain frequencies that is going through and it's going to affect, you know, my brain activities and all that. So I learned from that slide saying that 72 megahertz is actually our brain frequency. And what I did was I actually did it, you know, I, I going back to 72 and let's take a look at the video and it's self-explanatory and everything will make clear to you after the end of the video. Let's play the video. Guys, this is uh, something pretty shocking. We rented this Airbnb and... Uh... I started to experience this unexplainable headache whenever I go near to the kitchen and prepare the food. So what happened was we got this gadget here. So remember I always say that you know our human body, body organs uh, aggregate frequency is around 55 to 90 and we found that 72 is actually the brain frequency. So I'm going to hook up the software here to identify whether what causes my headache because 72 is actually the frequency of your brain. So over here in this setting, we got two LED lights, one above us, another one is actually the, uh, the small one over here. The switch is over there. Okay, the switch is over there. So let me turn on the first switch of the LED and I want to see, I want you to see the noise spectrum from the LED lights, the first light. As I turn on the first LED light, as you can see, the noise spectrum came in at 72 megahertz and the flux itself stretches from 72 all the way to about 72.3 and all the way down to about 73 megahertz okay this, this is the first led and if i turn on the second led above my head which is the top one i want you to see that the noise field spectrum actually goes into a darker color okay so let me show you the led this is the first one okay this is the first led and I got my antenna right above, and the second LED is actually above my head. And as you can see, the spectrum here, the noise became darker and darker. So what happens is that I pull out my M guard and I just put my M guard next to the kitchen. And I want you to see what happens when I turn on my M guard. I 
after I took on my M guard and immediately the headache just went away. Alright, so what happens when I turn off my M guard again? I'll just want you to see the contrast. Switch off the M guard again. And when my M guard is off, immediately the noise wave from 72 megahertz came back. And this explains why I'm getting this unexplainable headache because 72 is actually resonating with my brain frequency. And that's why I'm getting this headache. Let me just turn back on the M guard. Okay, so it's pretty amazing. So thanks Enagic, thank you so much for allowing us to own this technology to protect ourselves. Okay, so I find this video, you know, it's lifestyle and uh, we're just doing some random experiment in one of the uh, Airbnb. And this is one of the uh, findings that we, we found out and we just did a quick video explanation. Okay, to show you. And for those people who are wondering, you know, what is this software and all that. Now, this software is a bit technical and it's only compatible with Android phones and uh, not for Mac. And it's very hard for you to even tune the monopole antenna because it's a very technical software. So my humble opinion is that when you do demonstration, go back to using the detector. It's a more simpler manner because this antenna only shows very specific uh, frequencies and a very specific attenuation. So it's not suitable for conducting any MGUT demos. It's only good to show you, you know, this is actually some of the findings that we got because the detector doesn't show you a specific frequency. But the detectors that we use shows you the power density reading, okay, from the radiation source. But this software doesn't show you, you know, the uh, microwatts. It actually shows you a different spectrum, which is the noise pattern rather than the power density from the radiation. So it's a different thing, okay? So now let's go back to the slides here. So I hope that, you know, this video actually helps you and it actually helps you to understand better, okay, at uh, how to counter the frequently asked questions. So let me just go back. Let me just do a quick uh, summarize. So the first FAQ question we are talking about, you know, uh, we're talking about RD, you know, the detectors and all that. So you can go back to the video. The second one is talking about, you know, what RD is measuring. So from there, you can explain to the customer clearly that, you know, the detector is actually measuring high frequency electromagnetic noise radiation. It's very different as compared to the other detectors out there. And the third question, people ask you, how come MGUT only eliminates or suppresses, you know, uh, harmonized frequencies below 1G? And simple explanation is due to resonance, you know, theory, because we wanted to target uh, the frequency range which resonates with the human body. You know, anything between 30 to 300. So this is actually the key point. Okay, we wanted to solve that issue so that we will defend ourselves better. And of course, to actually, to actually get improvement from microcirculation as well. Okay, so the next topic, I'm going to pass to my colleague, Benedict. And he's the one who compiled these slides. And, you know, he's going to share with you in regards to the uh, installation tips and some of the demo tips, you know, going forward so that you can you know, start step certain, you know, do and don'ts, you know, when you do the demonstration, okay? So I'd like to pass uh, this session to my colleague and he's going to carry on with uh, the next explanation, okay? Let's welcome Ben. Hi guys. Can you guys uh, see me in, hear me? Okay. Okay. I uh, just reply some <laughs> message in the chat, in the meeting chat. Huh? Okay. Uh, my name is Ben and I'm David's colleague. So today I will carry on on the installation experience, sharing some in installation experience on uh, some technical terms. Huh? Okay. So the beginning, in the first question is uh, the installation guide. Some of the uh, client that bought about this MGUD, right? They try to install it to the extension socket, meaning that uh, why we choose a single power socket, right? Is meaning that some of the electro electronic gadgets, right? It may have different uh, ampere and current, so it may affect the MGUD's coverage. So, um, 
something we can't see. You can't see. Hold on, huh? guys. Can you see Ben from from the screen? It, it's can, uh, can you see Ben's face? Hold on, huh? Cannot, cannot. Yes. Okay. Good. Good. All right. Can. Okay. All right. Carry on. Okay. No. Some say no. Okay. Are, are you guys seeing the slides? Can you see the share yes, screen? Yes. Yes. The presentation slides. Okay. Now we saw Ben now. Okay. okay cool. Move. Ben, maybe you just move over. Okay. Use my. Uh, uh, no, no, I just turned on. Oh, you just turned uh, on? Okay, uh, because cool. just now I forgot to un right, unspotlight. Right. Okay, okay, guys. Okay, let me continue. Hello. Let me continue my explanation just now about, okay, explaining the power source. Why it is so important that, because some of our cases, right, they actually um, seeing that some of the cases that we install the MGUD in the extension power socket. Okay, some of the range might uh, become shorter. It's because that uh, the current is not stable on the case. So some of the extension socket, the quality, their brands is uh, maybe got some variance of the current supply. So the best is that we will try to choose single power socket for optimize the MGUD's coverage. So meaning that to avoid, if let's say your house is really uh, don't have enough socket, like my house, I also using a power extension, but the other socket that I was used is the minimum current, like maybe phone charging or uh, some minor uh, support lah, will not affect. If let's say you plug in with a Air dryer or vacuum cleaner, so it may be high voltage, right? It may drug the efficacy of the M gas. Okay, this is the first uh, tips that you need to take note. Okay, so the second one, right? We have to avoid some power source is due to the adapter because M gas will not provide any uh, source that USB. But we got the recommendation for the USB type of normally it will comes with 5v meaning 5 volt with 2 ampere to 6 ampere some may some may get from the previous one we can see maybe 1 ampere okay that is not compatible for MGUD usage you must search above 2 to 6 ampere within the USB you can see the first you can see the first image right it it actually uh, show dot got multiple meaning that you can see the 9v the 12v and the 5v so equals that this is called multiple power output adapter so we must always choose the first the second one meaning that you can see the cursor on the output of 5v to ampere okay so that uh, this is the recommend uh, you don't see other many number of output got 12v and 9v that is the uh, the select the correct adapter okay so next next is the another things that even though that some of the adapter now so they got type c output and usb right so got multiple usb we we don't want to put that much because that if let's say you choose a single one if let's say you accidentally uh, plug in another usb cable may be affect the, the current pulling from the uh, will affect the MGAS coverage also. Okay, this is the best way that you choose single output of the USB and the single voltage. So this is all that we had mentioned in our website. So if let's say you can see, go back to the website, it will show everything is clear there. And this, uh, this PPT, right, this part, presentation slide will be uploaded to our MGUD library uh, presentation after maybe to, tomorrow we will you can find out on there so you can have a have a look on that okay the third one is eh, sorry the fourth one 3d is that a lot of people that they, they think that our type c cable right is same to their phone android uh, same type c cable so it is not actually our MGUD original cable, right? 
is more longer. You can see on the right, right cursor there. It's more longer and this is normal handphone type C or some of the electronic uh, gadgets, right? They may, um, how to say, they may actually got type C connector also. So you must take note, don't accidentally use the wrong one. Maybe your M guard will not uh, light up the, the indication light. Okay, so uh, until here, I want to, I want to ask about Sorry. Um, hold on. Uh, I accidentally press it. Hold on. Uh, share screen. Okay. Okay. At this point, right, I'm going to go for more uh, technical. This is because that uh, the electrostatic, right, uh, some of the people they don't understand why uh, this actually electrostatic will affect to MGAT. So I, I give you a few example. So this the first one, right, is the mirror reflection. Uh, if let's say the MGAT is now putting in the table, okay, installing in the table, maybe the behind of the mirror may not be covered is due to some reflection material of the glasses mirror. Okay, so the second one is the aluminum or metal. It will affect MGAT's range as well. So meaning that if let's say this, this table, right, is more easier. If let's say I put in, in the MGAT over on the table, if let's say the mirror behind got a, a huge metal or aluminum plate, it will affect the, the range also. So it will not penetrate. Okay, it's due to the accumulative of electrostatic charge. So meaning that electrostatic, right, is something that what we call is loose electron leading to the occurrence of electrostatic charge, meaning that it may, may, may how to say, build up a, a huge, huge uh, shield to prevent it. <laughs> okay, this is something uh, very technical. So next, uh, another thing that we need to take note, right, is electrostatic environment, meaning that a lot of electronic gadgets when they are operating it they are running all this uh, current inside right so in this area if let's say we are installing an end guard on the table then it may affect the the range of the m guards efficacy so meaning that uh, we we make sure that every time if let's say you got this type of thing you because last time i heard a, a distributor telling us that asking us, is it uh is it this electronic pc a lot right so we must put nearer to the pc so that it, the m guard enable to 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 kill it very quickly because of the in, instant of the near uh, distance but the answer is no if let's say the a lot of uh, these gadgets right when they are opening you must put behind the table for example like this next image right so this this is a power power cable right so if let's say today we plug some uh the m guard inside here is also incorrect because it will affect the function of m guards okay so the next one is don't install m guard directly on the floor so why why on the floor is because that some hidden cable below or like myself i'm living in the condo at not normal daytime right i use the rd9100 to to measure the detector to measure my floor right it actually very low reading is because that they are my downstairs they they don't open the the led light or their lighting in their house but at night time right it actually a uh, very huge amount from my floor because I'm living in the 17th floor. So when the 16th floor is turning on the light, right, it actually uh, emits a lot of electromagnetic radiation. So it may attach with the my flooring. So the correct way to place your M guard, right, is to put on the original box above. Uh, it's either a portrait or landscape also can. Okay, this is the example.
okay, that we can put on the top to prevent the electrostatic effect, the efficacy of MGUT's coverage. Okay, so until now, I think this is some of the MGUT installation tips and do and don'ts that we we want to focus on. So, uh, is if let's say got any question, right? You can post under under the end of the presentation. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about number four, the demonstration experience. Okay. This demonstration experience is that the first one that uh, we can see the picture. Some of the people they 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 took the RD radi radiation detector right in the round area because this round area right inside got a lot of copper coil so this may affect because you know human body are 70 percent of 65 to 70 percent of water so we actually a conductor so we are easily to absorb all this electrostatic and affect to the force reading so the last one that we we can uh, use as a reference that if let's say you measure in some electronic gadgets or your pc laptop right you can try to hold your finger and, and make sure that it's not put very close to the copper coil area okay this is some wrong example image okay so the next one is some maintenance because this detector is not cheap also it's a uh it's a some points that we, we must uh, note down a few keywords that we must do how to take care of this detector because this is not the drop proof or waterproof or or heat proof okay detector you can see the the waterproof icon and the sun icon so the first one is that after using the our radiation detector please put it back in the pe bag there is a, a transparent plastic bag okay so inside got a silica gel Please make sure that the silica gel is put inside. So sometimes, right, in Malaysia, they are they are quite humid one. So the if let's say the silica gel become most of the time, maybe ninety percent of around they are going to become pink, right? You can change it a new one, or can replace some new silica gel. Okay. So the third one you must store this. Uh, radiation detector after doing the demo right most of the time if let's say it's a daytime you put inside your car in the put it under the sun right the car the it may heat up the detector so please make sure to carry on don't put under the the celsius that 20 celsius to 30 celsius between okay and another thing you can see my cursor there there is a icon battery icon come out if let's say they pop up right it will actually ask you to replace a new battery and sometimes that uh, our our the reading may not be very accurate like my phone is normally when i turn on the screen right the reading may be go up to 2000 if let's say i using a uh maybe going near to empty the battery right maybe 8.2 or 8.3 the battery efficacy the the current storage is going to become lesser it will measure the reading maybe up to 1000 or 900 it will different so if let's say you found out there is another reading you can choose to change another new 9 volt standard battery to replace it okay so okay okay now can can you guys give me some response because i'm uh if let's say until here right you you guys are still around to listen to me just give me some number about 333 so i can see okay thanks catherine city okay thank you thank you so i was just carrying on okay thank you okay now the four c question uh, is the tips that if let's say today right a customer or my my they are they are living in a bungalow house or semi d is very huge house right they may need more than one unit of m guard so if let's say today we want to conduct an m guard demo please make sure to turn on one at a time okay 
is why is because that while the two M guard is turning on in the same environment, right? It will actually uh, create some det uh, detection false detect uh, false measurement reading. So the reading. So the reason of this, right, is because the radiation detector is a sensitive equipment. Two or more angle in the same environment will affect the measurement. Okay, so please take note that but the two or more angle in the same environment will not affect the angle's function. It's just affecting the radiation detector. Maybe they, they may go to haywire sometimes. Okay, so the next one is your body positioning uh, a lot of people right they they because do you do you guys know that uh before that i, I don't know whether you guys got heard about one thing called grounding uh, because every human body right uh, we will absorb some certain types of electrostatic in our body so sometimes we went to the to open up the door right we will get some static shock so human our human body is actually the best conductor la, so for this. So while we are doing MGUTS demo, right, we try to put our self, you can go to ground first. <laughs> Maybe put it, uh, how to say, just uh, put your hand or whatever, go to ground, grounding first. So to, to, to discharge, la, to discharge your, your electrostatic first. So it may easier. Why I show this, this one is because that in, some some cases that if let's say today uh while we are doing to using the radiation detector right to doing then a uh, demo so you must make sure that uh the detector is not blocked by your body okay you can see the david is uh in front that is not blocking so the next one right we uh, we got a video for it to, to to explain more about the the electrostatic may affect the force reading Let's take a look. Okay. But uh, okay, sorry, uh, because this video, right, is the only language in the Mandarin. So I will try to explain it while you, you list, uh, watch this video first. Uh. Okay. Okay, you guys can see the David is actually stepping on the on the actually this M guard right is is turning on, but David is stepping on the floor that had the electrostatic. So the you can slightly hear the beeping sound of the detector right. Just continue it. Okay, I'm sorry because uh the only Chinese video I try to explain it this situation for you. Okay. Uh, so you guys can see the 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 detector is stopped beeping while David is standing uh, next to the area, but the detector is still uh, the handphone measurement is still the same uh, anchor. Okay, you see. Okay. Yeah, okay. This video, right? Just now, David was stepping on the place that got high electrostatic place that we cannot see. But while we are human body is a conductor, right? So you can see that we can able to absorb the the electrostatic and go through the to the detector to get the false reading. So let's uh, don't worry because even though this air, this range right we, we can see even sometimes we mentioned to customer that MGUT is unable to cover up to four meters radius right but it is okay maybe it is just some some false reading is due to electrostatic just uh how to say 
to to calm calm your customer down to to say that it may be is a is an electrostatic reading. So next one is a more clearer picture that we we use the electrostatic ball to do the demo. Okay, let's see. It. Hi guys. So in this video, we will be explaining how static affects sensitive equipment like the Audi. So now, I'm going to use the Audi to scan the phone, as you can see. So it's picking up radiation reading. But as soon as I turn on the M guard, as you can see, the white LED light is on. So the radiation is gone, okay? So I'm going to move all the way back just to show you that M guard can actually cover up to that range, okay? It's further away from the table. So what we're going to do next is we're going to turn on the static ball. And as soon as I turn on the static ball, I'm going to show you that, you know, the static, it's able to trigger the RD to beep. Okay, so once I scan the phone and I go near to the static ball, the RD 900 begins to beep again, although it is within the coverage range of the M guard. Okay, it's very near, it's less than one meter. But as soon as I move away from the static ball, as you can see, the radiation detector stops beeping because M guard still function. It's just that whenever we go near to a static area, the RD9100 will get affected by the static and it begins to beep again. Okay. So now I'm going to turn off the static ball. So now the area is without electrostatic, as you can see. And as I scan the phone again, there is no beeping. So during your demonstration, don't get panicked. Whenever there is a beeping sound here and there, it is actually due to electrostatic, but your M guard is still working fine. Okay. Okay, guys. <coughs> so this is the, uh, that we research on the, the Google. So this electrostatic, right, will affecting the radiation detector depending on the construction material. And it is this, uh, these things, right, you can see that the static electricity can actually affect the component, especially semiconductors that are often quite sensitive because radiation detector, just now you mentioned that you can see the, the electrostatic, why sometimes that beeping got false reading, everything, right, is, is due to the static. So this is that we search on Google. You can get the, you can get the result for this. This is a screenshot, okay? So next, uh, the next one is that I try to explain about our technology documentation start on day one, okay? So eventually, this is the next topic. So you guys want to, uh, how to say, take a quick, oh, no need, oh, sorry, sorry, uh, it's, it's for time. Okay, I try to act uh, faster, okay? This one is the video, right? It's about that uh, our technology is is inside the the what we call this is a, a export matrix matrix. So in this video, right, matrix is currently in a renovation stage. So this is the before we, we took this video. Let's have a look. That is the short clip that uh, last time we took in the matrix before the renovation. Okay, now because it's quite late, so I try to fast forward a bit uh, to explain the documentation. MGAS technology documentation. At the beginning time, right, there is a, 
the first uh, reward that uh, we, we won in 2010 is the ITEX is for that time is only suitable for computer radiation reducer. That time is about 13 years ago. It's quite, I, I still remember the, the, the PC is quite uh, huge, uh, the monitor that time. Okay. So that time, right, already had uh, won the award for reducing the computer radiation. Okay. So the second one is that my IPO uh, Intellectual Property Corporation of Malaysia my IPO 2012, we, we own the, uh, we own a patent, okay, from Malaysia. So the next one is the ICANN from the Canada, Canada uh, Invention Competition. So it's reducing, the title was reduced electromagnetic radiation from electrical appliance. So meaning that 2016, they, this technology already won this, this kind of uh, award to reduce electrical appliance. So I was trying, it's, it's quite, quite, uh, how to say, surprised that, uh, surprised that why uh, unable to earn uh, on this. This is a Malaysian technology, you know. The inventor is a Malaysian with a few uh, Panasonic X uh, engineer. They invented this technology back in 2000. One O. Okay, so the next one, the the improvement of the, uh, the. This technology right is able to speed up the microcirculation blood flow, from the Taiwan. This is the Taiwan, and another one in year of two, 2020, 2020 that uh, our technology sent to the USM to do the, the improvement of the animals blood circulation and it will not affect the blood pressure of the, the mice, okay? So the next one that just now you, David has shared to you guys that the eyeball of the Liu, Dr. Liu Renche that is done in 2020 or so. So they took this technology and do the self about 10, 10 patients for the test, okay? So the next one is SGS for standard, uh, SGS, SGS is actually a laboratory, world-renowned laboratory, and they are tested all the product from FCC. FCC is for US standard, then the CE is the European standard. We both uh, already enabled to, how to say, go to worldwide. So the last one is the last year, we got the another My IPO, uh, Intellectual Property of Malaysia also. Uh, it's different. Uh. You can see the 2012 and the 2021, 22 one is uh, different. So we got two patents. So next one, I'm going to show you some of the report that we, we did. You can see the, the picture of the, this is our MGAD and they done in the lab, everything right, with the proper setting. So they, they enable to say, see that this product is safe for use will not affect our human body. This is some pictures you can see. This is MGAD in the in this report. So all these things, right? We will upload it after the training. Maybe tomorrow, I try to upload it then in the MGAD library, so you guys can have a look more clearer. Okay. So today end up. Uh, the training is end. Sorry to take for so long time. So now I pass pass it to David. Thank you. Okay, can we give a round of applause to, to Ben to encourage him, you know, and uh, I think he did a good job explaining to us uh, technical wise, you know, people have to bear with because technical knowledge is important and uh, there are certain things that we need to sidestep and it is always, you know, uh, good to learn about all these technical so they can sidestep all the future possible mistakes, you know. And today in our today's training, I think we got more materials. We managed to get some of the photographs of how MGAD is actually being tested in the world-renowned lab in SGS. And I think just now there is one uh, uh, leader asking about how come MGAD is not obtaining this serum for local market and all that. So a simple answer to all of you is that you know serum it's a Malaysian-based uh, testing laboratory company, and basically it's actually testing a lot of uh, all these so-called electrical appliances or devices because 
uh, we, we actually need it. You know, we need serine be, be before the product is launched to the market. Okay, but if you notice, right, for MGUD, MGUD itself, it doesn't come with an adapter. There's no adapter. When you when you open up the box, you know, MGUD only comes with the MGUD, which is the machine itself, and a USB-C, you know, uh, cable. Okay, so usually serine certified means you have to have this uh, so-called adapter. It's like the Kangle machine. Kangle machine comes with a three-pin adapter. So when your product comes with a three-pin adapter and you need to hook on to a power socket, this is when you know you need the uh, the uh, serum approved on the power adapter. But products that comes with just the uh, USB-C cable, you know, theoretically you don't need serum. But because of uh, Energix initiative, the developer carry on and they move on to actually apply for the global SGS testing standard for both FCC and also the CE standard for the European standard. And given that uh, Malaysia is a Commonwealth country and a lot of our uh, electrical appliances is actually following the British standard back then. So that's the reason why we're using the three pins rather than the two pin in Thailand and Philippines and all that, okay? All right, so this is just to address to you how come uh, we don't need the serum in Malaysia for MGUD, but we still obtain the SGS for the worldwide exportation purposes, okay, in this aspect. Okay, now I think uh, just now during the peak uh, moment, we do have uh, about 140 and it went all the way up to 184 participants. Okay, for those of you who stay back, I truly appreciate your time and your seriousness in this project. And for those of you who stayed back, you know, and I just want to tell you that, you know, it's not easy to go through a two hours, almost two hours long uh, training. And I really appreciate your commitment. And because of your commitment, it gives us more energy and uh, more motivation, you know, to dig up or to find out more uh, uh, EMR-related documentations and also MGUD-related information to help you or to aid you in your marketing journey, you know, in this in, 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 in this uh, in this whole project itself, okay? So because of time constraint, and uh, we're going to take on maybe a few questions from the crowd. If let's say you have some questions, you can just uh, put it in your chat box. And if I can answer the questions, I will do my best. Okay, before we end today's uh, training. And for those people who missed out certain part of training, please be reminded that this whole training is recorded and we will upload, we will upload this recording into the MGUD official channel so that everyone can actually watch the training over and over again and uh, repeat, you know, actively learn about some of these uh, materials that we got from the training. Okay, so well, welcome, welcome to all the people who stand here. So, okay, let's take a look at some of the chat box. You're welcome, you're welcome, guys. You're welcome. Now, we might not be able to take all questions due to time reasons. And uh, there you go. Let's take a look at it's available now. Okay, any particular important questions that we need to? Okay, I think we've answered most of the uh, questions. Hi, David. Okay, there you go. David, can you hear me? I'm Hemant here. David. Okay, I think there's one question. So is there any equivalent device to MGUD? Now, based on our knowledge currently, talking about competitors, we have a lot of similar concept products in market, meaning a lot of products, they are claiming that they can actually help with radiation, but they are actually of a different technical theory. There are a lot of, a lot of products out there. Uh, they have different, different functions. And some of them, they're actually helping your body to defend the radiation. And some products, they're actually reflecting the radiation and all that. So to my knowledge, up to date, uh, I believe that MGUD currently, it's the only technology in the market who has the ability to reduce high frequency electromagnetic noise radiation with a given four meter radius, meaning you don't have to even touch the product. The product works airborne, you know. So at the distance, it has the ability to actually suppress that energy. So by far, I think this is unique. And for information, MGUD is a patented product. And we obtained both patents back in 2012. The first patent is actually the patent title for 2012 is an apparatus, okay, for electromagnetic radiation suppression. So the first patent. Uh, the developer obtained it back in 2012, which is 11 years ago, okay? And the newest patent, which is last year, they obtained it 
it's actually an apparatus for effectively suppressing or help improve the microcirculation after or through the suppression of radiation. Okay, so that's the second patent they obtained. So this product has got two patents, huh? and one is in 2012, another one is in 2022. Okay. Let's move on. How about PowerPoint presentation? Okay, we'll be uploading the PowerPoint as well. Don't worry. Okay. All right. Outline. I think we did that to Mason's question. Okay, there's one question from Heman Kuma. Does NGAT cancels the radiation emitted from devices completely like how the detector goes to zero? Now, Heman, to answer this question, in the radiation spectrum, there are wide ranges of different different measurement. Okay, so some spectrum they actually measure the energy level from the signal shooting up from the antenna. Okay, some detectors they actually measure the radiation coming from the power source, which is the power line itself, and usually it's at a very low frequency, about fifty to sixty hertz. Okay, now why the detector goes to ground zero when it do the demo is because this detector is built to measure high frequency electromagnetic noise radiation. So it's at a different spectrum, okay? So when the MGAS suppresses the noise spectrum as shown from the SDR software, this explains why the detector is actually getting uh, zero power density reading after you turn on the MGAS, okay? So it is a different radiation spectrum uh, for your knowledge. Okay, why did not come with battery like one zero, okay? All right, this one, you know, it's up to the uh, supplier. It's not up to me, it's up to the supplier, okay? All right, what happens? Da, da, da. Anything else? There's a product name, okay, by Simon Yo, claiming the same feature as MGAT related, okay. For information, this question, okay, there's a product named SafeLink and own SafeLink for five years. Okay, now, SafeLink is actually the previous uh, model name for the same technology before Energic took over uh, the technology. So, so before, okay, if you notice, right, the patent came out back in 2012. So between 2012 to date, you know, the developer has actually developed another product by the name of SafeLink Okay, and it is actually the same technology at, at, as what you are looking at now today. So back in 2022, Enagic decided to take over this technology and rename it to MGAT. So this is how you got the new MGAT. And currently, Enagic is actually the global sole owner or distributors for this particular technology segment. So Enagic took over the entire technology. So SafeLink is the old model, has been discontinued since one year ago. Okay. And some of our prospects has been using it for five years now, as you mentioned here. It's correct because SafeLink is not uh, new. It has been in the market for many years, okay, since 2016 uh, to be, to be, uh, to be uh, precise, okay, 2016. So it is the same technology, but the only different thing is that SafeLink is actually using the old uh, power cord system, which is the AC model. And if you notice MGUD machine, it does not come with a power cord or a two pin plug or even a three pin plug because MGUD is the world's first direct current model. It's the world's first DC model. And you can actually power up this MGUD, you know, using a DC power bank. For example, you know, sometimes when there is an emergency, it is not advisable although, but during an emergency, you need to just power up MGUD. You can just use a power bank and it, it, it works fine as well. Okay, so it, it is actually the world's first uh, direct current model and the developer switch it from an AC model to a DC model. Okay, and according to developer, the logic behind is that because AC model sometimes when the current comes in, it fluctuates at a different peak point and it might be able to shorten the component's lifespan. But with a 5 volt DC model, 
when the current comes into the MGUD at a more regulated or lower uh, electrical point, it has the ability to prolong the components of the MGUD as well. So that's the reason why they're switching from the AC, the old model, to the new MGUD DC model for your information. Okay. All right. I mean, there is a lot of questions going on. And uh, to time's constraint, I would love to answer all that, but we will then take questions in the upcoming training. And just a quick reminder, I would invite all of you here. If let's say you have got some frequently asked questions that you need answer, please remember to visit mgut.com. And below there, we have uploaded certain FAQs with answers, you know, together to aid you to respond to your customers. And I think most of your questions here are answered based on the FAQs supplied from the website itself. Okay. And with that, I would like to conclude today's EIT training. It's late. It's 10.30. It's two hours. And thanks, guys, for listening and staying back. And with that, I wish you all the best in your MGUT journey. Okay? Thank you so much. And have a great night. See you again. Yeah. yeah. Okay, everybody. Good Bye. night, everybody. Bye, Energic family. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome.